living here about 10 years now, but almost every day we really surprised with the beauty of this land. It's really unique. This campus itself is a huge like a material palette. <coughs> Could you open it? The building is called the Bass House. This plaster wall and we mix the natural the local clay. Yeah, the even the around the windows or ceiling, that's also we use this side sand and side clay. So that's all natural color, so there's no pigment. I like the high windows because in this case, you have this perspective goes up to the bluffs. Yeah, all the way out there. So, yeah, there is all like a shower booth and uh, the handle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then that one is uh, the, it's called the flex cleat. Because they mix uh, the cement and the ash. So it's very light and also easy to cut. And this can be the structure. Mm. Uh, so we just uh, stuck together and, uh, yeah, with uh, the joint of the, the model. I, is it in a similar in a way to hemp crate? Mm. Oh, yeah, it's similar. Mm -hmm. similar yes. How does it differ from using cement? It's so, so yeah, it's, it's so light. It's like light. And, and then this ashes can be like recycled. It's very, it's very light. Oh, you can see how when you pick it up even. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you're just, yeah. It's so light. Even baby can hold it, right? <laughs> yeah, it's so light. And then that's why it's carved. That's like a student just using the saw and then make this cubby shape. Most of our techniques or texture is like adapted with non-skilled person. We call it like a wiki house because we can download the data that we can cut using a CNC machine from four feet by eight feet plywood. Then we can assemble mm -hmm. together. So like each piece is very small. So then even one, like a one person can carry every piece, like a, a one piece is like this big. So even one woman, we can hold it. So then there's a, almost like a no nail or screw for the joint. So it's kind of like a puzzle or like a traditional joist. So that's like laser cutting can like make it possible. So it's one of the solution, even like a non-skilled person, everyone can make it, make the house without any specific tool or like a, without any heavy duty machine. Everyone can make it like a, it's kind of like a furniture. So like a assemble the, like a, like a I care things like a, with like assemble pieces, they can create a house. Like we can feel the future, but uh, at this point, at this location, still it's like um, too difficult to access such a machine. So that's why we don't use these techniques for the reservation project, but it may be in the future. You want to see where we're staying? Sure. It's a container structure. It's those containers. I'm not, it's one of those container buildings over there. I think this is us, but I don't know if it's open. You want to try opening it? Is that door open? It is. Okay. All right. No, it's not open. Oh, it is. Oh, wow. It swings. It's not ours, though. Okay. Bye. There's. It's warm. It's really warm. Yeah, it's kind of warm. We have sheets. We have our own sheets. We brought. The student decided to use the shipping container and they flipped the shipping container because they wanted to use um, the floor space for the mechanical and the lighting. And if you go inside, you see the, the logo is upside down. So uh, they use uh, uh, two containers, one container here and one container here, and in, in between we have like uh, the public space. Mm. It's a great another gathering spot here. Yes. And you also use the natural material. You can yes. Mix. Then even like this shower booth, that one is uh, the lime finish. Oh, yes. So that one is a natural plaster too. And for the shower it needs to be more... Yeah, it's like a, it's waterproof. It's called the Tadillac, this finish. The most of the students, they never have such experience to live in the space where it's using the natural like, materials. Mm -hmm. 
I like the rough texture like this because if it's like a paint, like a stain, of course it, it's easy to to clean yeah, or to yeah. make it clean. But uh, for me, the cleanness or glossy uh, means it's like uh, the barrier between the people to the material. So I like to put like a rough texture so that we can feel more direct relationship between the human being and the material. This material, it's, mm. I think it's called a monopan. It's have a, like the, the honeycomb mm. structure inside. And it has a little bit of the insulation and also we can feel the light through uh, this material. And if we open, we clearly see the reflection of the light as yes. we open to cast the shadow, uh, which is gray. And Yes, so then that one is we call the cedar hole. The neighbor gave us some critiques like we shouldn't use uh, cedar in this desert because it's so easy to get damaged, like because sun exhausted. And uh, but we're thinking like what we can do with non-skilled person. It's easy to cut or to make this product. And I see you have a natural finish. Or? Yeah, that one is um, it's like a natural plaster. Yeah, but a different color. Yeah, different color. Yeah. So the texture, non-professional people can do it. So if it's like a super clean, solid finish, that's too hard for non-skilled. Mm -hmm. Like a, mm -hmm. even us, it's too hard. Mm -hmm. But uh, with the students, we can achieve this, like a texture. We try to explore this landscape or this local nature or local culture. So then, especially when we go to hike, we try to gather just a piece of the land. Every piece is, is so beautiful. That one is even like we go to hike, like almost a similar spot. So the color is a slight difference. It's so different. I mean, this one almost looks like green. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's, some spot it's a really unique spot. Yeah, unique area. Yeah, there's rich colors around us. We can find these shapes in a wash. So then the students see this low material. So then they see like uh, with these activities, that one is uh, some plaster sample that the student made or these adobe bricks or that one is uh, natural pigment. So we try to create these things. We try to explore the possibility how to use this raw material into architecture finish. And then they see the beauty of this land, how we can represent the beauty of the Navajo culture or Navajo nation. I grew up here, I went to school over here at Bluff Elementary School. So I literally grew up here, so I just, I love this area because of the rocks and the, just the view. I love it. You're in a whole different world out here. You're by yourself, it seems like where you're like secluded from all the big cities. Being on the reservation is really a sacred for a lot of Navajos. We were told that being on the reservation will protect us. Like here, we have our, our, our four sacred mountains, uh, starting mm -hmm. with the east and then back to southwest and then the north. And then there's colors that comes with it. That's what we're taught, that the four sacred mountains is what protects you. So you have to stay inside of that and the reservations inside of that. When we left high school, we moved to Utah. Being on the reservation, when you grow up on the reservation, you know where your roots are. And I kept thinking, I need to go back, I need to go back. Every Navajo, we have the right to get a home and the tribe pays for it. And so we finally got approved and then they said Design Build Bluff was looking for a project. This is pretty much the plan we were just agreeing on. We finally agreed on this plan. The idea of this was the horseshoe in our tradition, everything is clockwise. The one door came here and then you just walk clockwise this way. So, so we kept that tradition top left, yeah. the, the, the door facing the east. Yeah. 
my ancestors were there where uh, we, our house is being built. That's where I'm from. My all my grandparents, my ancestors, they all they all came from there. I can go all the way back. I wanted something modern. I know we have our tradition and stuff, but I think the Hogan is everyone's sacred place. So we eventually will get a Hogan, make a Hogan for ourselves too. But to something to live in every day, I wanted a modern home. This was built in 2018. That's all made to like be modifiable. So these are the, these are just like leaflets that you can lift up as like t a table. And then as well, like the, this was on hinges and could flip out into like a larger bed. The material too, that has, is that plastic? It's, this material is called three form. They use 40% recycled plastic, but I love that this has this like straw. They give us their off cuts. So we're like, we're using s stuff that would have been otherwise thrown away. So we have a lot of this in our scrap yard. This is our wood shop. All of our tools are like barcoded um, to update on like the maintenance needed or the maintenance that's taking place on them. The building itself is very interesting. The beams come together in an, in an angle that looks almost dangerously pointing down. Mm -hmm. Obviously the load has been <laughs> reviewed. It's, it's very interesting. Yeah. Another shipping container. So we, we have a lot of repurposed material. So you can see like up here, we have a lot of carpet <laughs> that's like providing insulation to this side. It's almost church-like, almost like a steampunk sort of cathedral, right? Like a Mad Maxi yeah. cathedral. All of these doors can be opened in an accordion style. a little bit of elbow grease. This is actually our tool shed. So we bring this like horse trailer to our job sites with us. So you leave the tools there for the three months. Yeah. 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 Fast process. Yeah. And then this is our like material yard. So any material that we've like salvaged or has been donated or we had extra of like ends up here. It's all the free stuff. Yes. Okay, so you try to do as much free as possible. Yeah. Okay. So this is the Bluff Fort. Bluff was settled in the late 1800s by Mormon settlers. In the 1600s, the Navajo tribe did settle like permanent homes here, which is like the traditional home is a Hogan. So we're crossing over the San Juan River right now. So this is Navajo Nation on the opposite side. Okay, so it begins here? Yeah, it begins here. Okay. How large is the Navajo Reservation? It's like 27,000 squ square miles. Yeah. But so, yeah. to across the state borders as well, no? Right, right, right. Yeah, so we'll eventually we'll be in Arizona. <laughs> I don't know how many miles until Arizona. So the Navajo Nation is about the same size as West Virginia. It's also the same size as like Vermont, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts combined. But in that area, there's only like 13 grocery stores. So what you see out here is like one of the largest problems too is the housing stock because there is such a large housing shortage on Navajo Nation. As you can see behind this uh, the okay. dune, the 2013, we built the black building, rabbit year project. 
fantastic from here. You only see the only the roof one. Yeah, the roof is like a flat roof. Yeah. We design and build the project Bajar Spring 2015. Design Build Bluff was founded in 2000 because there was a need for architectural education to include hands-on building. And so it was an opportunity to give these students this learning experience, but then also to build for people that are in need of housing. And after that, on the right-hand side, we see the two rusted metal, like the cube that we built in 2014. Those were, so those were Portent steel? Yes, and the metal, it's like covered by the oil, and we wanted to make it last before we leave. So we lay the, like a 60 of the metal on the ground, and we use a soap to take the oil off, and we use like a vinegar to let it the rust quickly, and we put it on. In that cluster, behind it, and that is like a bomb wall. On the middle, there's like a huge the chimney. I came to Design Build Bluff in 2019 as a volunteer builder, and I was really intrigued by the way that they were using natural materials in a contemporary way. Like all of the projects include some natural plaster, and the plaster is usually harvested from the site uh, usually where the foundation, the material that's dug up from the foundation. So so all the plaster every year is so different and it's like a reflection of the soil that the building is sitting on. So it looks like we are crossing Arizona from Utah to Arizona right now. But I mean, we're not in Arizona because we're on Navajo Nation, yeah. Navajo Nation is a sovereign entity, so they have their own governance. So even like Arizona goes by a different time zone. We work with several partners to help us identify homeowners, but the most basic things that we need in order to partner is a home site lease. Right behi behind the big tree, which we call it the lawn tree, uh -huh. over there, that's our, that's the project. So because Navajo does not believe in land ownership. That's where you have these long-term land leases for 75 to 100 years and you pay $1 per year for that acre of land. So the house that we're about to see is called Lone Tree and it was the first house that was part of this sweat equity housing project. Design Build Bluff worked with this homeowner to build their house as a way of building skills together with the homeowner because we think it is important for the homeowners to learn the skills that they need to repair the home or to expand the home. Okay. I was born and raised here yeah. and all my relatives, my mom and you know they all live around us. So. And what were you living in before? We had uh, an octagon you know and it kind of caved in you know from the oh. top and so when it was doing that then we decided to build this octagon again over here. One room, an octagon. <laughs> and it kind of got real old again because the roof was, you can see from here, the roof is kind of like caving down. Yeah. Yeah. And the drywalls and everything were coming down. The foundation is just all blowing out. So I decided I wanted a house. So it took us uh, quite a while, maybe over a year, to qualify for a sweat equity house. Wh what it took was we had to have a, a home site lease, you know, uh -huh. Good thing, my mom, you know, she she had a grazing commit. Okay, okay. So, almost a year they came by and they said, congratulations, you're the first candidate, you know, to be chosen to have a sweat equity home. And I was so happy, you know, when they came around and, you know, told us that, you know, 
And so after that, you have to go through a lot of orientation with the, these guys that were going to build the home. We went through training with them. You have to participate working with them, building a home, you know, like holding a hammer, holding the shovel, you know, from the, from the day one, from, uh, you know, doing the foundation, you have to help out. I thought it was just going to be a few days, you know, to build a home, but it's not like that, you know. At that time, I was working with a senior center, you know. And after I get off work, and then I put my hard hat on and put my safety glasses on, you know, and get ready to start working over here again, you know, with these guys, you know. How long did you build for? Four months, four January, months. February, March. Four months. Four months. It, it was winter and it was cold and. But yeah. it was a lot of fun. We really enjoyed, you know, yeah. working with them, yeah. you know, learning, you know, the, learning from them, you know. Yeah. The reason why, you know, we wanted a lot of windows, you know, because when we were living in there, you know, there wasn't much window, you know, it was just kind of like dark inside and didn't have enough uh, lights in there. You know, so we told them that we do a lot of craft work and stuff like that, so we need it. So they said, well, we'll put up a lot of windows so you can see what you're doing in there. That's so nice. It's so cool in here. You don't have air conditioning. Uh, we just have to fan on. Well, it used to be so cool during the summer. It was cooler during yeah. the summer because, you know, the insulation is so thick in here, you know, so it could stay cooler in here during the winter, during summertime. And then during the winter, you know, it's hot in here. You know, we hardly don't use our wooden stove. I like your kitchen counter. That oh yeah, like they did that with the cement. First they put a board together, you know, a two by four, I think it was, they put it together. And then they mixed the cement and they poured it in that. And next day when it got dried up, they lifted it and they put it on here. So this countertop we pour like on site and it's very like thick and it's very heavy. So we mix all the gravel and the sand and the cement and the together and we, we pour. It's a little bit too dry, so it's, but it's like a turn into like a good texture. Yeah, it's like a the marble texture. So hmm. It's true. It does feel like marble now. Yeah, yes. How did you polish it? Yeah. So we just like, uh, before it get too dry, we just like uh, keeping polishing by the, the trowel and uh, yeah, so that it's had more like a smooth uh, texture. How, how costly is it in materials for example? I think it's like, um, for sure, it's like less, less expensive. It's like uh, the stone and uh, we didn't have enough of the budget and we shouldn't decided to like pour the concrete on site. Is it difficult to know how to do it, to do it right? Uh, yes, because of the, the ratio, how wet and how soupy and how dry uh, to pour. Uh, and this one, when we pour, it, that was a little bit too dry. So you're saying it's not a science, but more or less, more it's like, a craft, like, a, yes. like an art, right? Yeah, it's like, like a, on, mm, a little bit dry or uh, a little bit like a too wet, and we know from a previous uh, the experience. It's like a slap. Stone. Yeah, so is this one over here. Everything was made by hand, even this cabinet, all this, they, they made it by hand. Yeah. And the cabinet is really tough uh, because we have to make it really like a perfect. Otherwise, it's like a, the it's twist, and we see uh -huh. some uh, of the, the gap. Uh, it'll uh, warp. Yeah, yes, it's yeah. warp. So, and yeah, they even did the sink, this metal sink. Really? By hand, everything is made by hand. <laughs> see, this is Adobe wall. You know, it's oh. all mud. They had to use the sand out here. Really? Yep. They used three different sand. The plaster, and they use the local sand. You see, we mix it with the lime and we put some texture. 
the reason we put some texture is it represent for more natural and more organic and also for the future if some like the wall has a crack it's more easier to fix it like as a design you still could see their hand here you know <laughs> So it's a house that, that can be maintained easily. Yes, maintained easily. Of course, we have more like smooth, perfect texture. Mm -hmm. But if we do so, it's very similar to like this paint and the texture. So we try to put more like a natural hand texture. One is, of course, it's a more natural the texture and also more easy to maintain. If we got a crack, it's easy to repair. It will feel natural to put another gradient yes. because it's it's it's, it's, it's already there. Yes. 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 This is all Adobe wall too, mm -hmm. you know, it's all Adobe wall, all, all around. Is yeah. that the same color? This, this one yeah. looks different. Is it different dirt? Or uh, different earth this is a, a different earth sand, yeah. you know. It's uh, mixed with hay, you know, you oh, can yeah. see. So this pink is, we put like sand and lime and this, the color is also we mix clay and also the straw and we see some of the straw we try to show a little bit and the straw is more like the binder the fiber makes uh, this wall more stronger to hold all the, the material together to make it strong and make it last longer so the, it's the st straw is structural but it also provides texture. texture yes it feels so nice in here too yes yeah, yes the air feel you know it's and also the another reason we use uh, the natural material is it observes the moisture so that it controls the moisture inside so that's part of the feel maybe in here yes it's also like a hold some dust and so that this wall also create more like a clean air and also we plaster more the thickness that fire yes it's increased like a fire rated the the time to hold even if it's get the fire mm -hmm. it's pretty amazing actually that a material can do that that just such a simple material actually has so many properties yes. <laughs> see this is a different earth that too it's all mixed with oh, yeah, yeah. it feels so much like from this area the colors and the texture it's beautiful yeah we can still see the handprint on there you know <laughs> of those guys when they were doing this. <laughs> so and yeah, we had all kinds of uh, people, you know, their family, their mom and dad, their grandparents, their kids, their girlfriend, their boyfriend, you know, they brought them and they help out around here, you know, doing building home, you know. So it's so. nice, so you liked that you have your friends and family and your own imprint on the house. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. What does it feel like to sleep in here? In oh, this? oh, it was so comfortable, you know. It was so comfortable. I never slept so good, you know. It was so cool in here. We didn't have to use fan or cooler or anything. You know? Wow. I love it. I really do love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your closet's open. Yeah. So that's a, it looks like an open uh, yeah. This one, we didn't have no closet. It's uh, my husband, he's the one that built this ah, the closet for okay. me. So you keep adding on. Yeah. And you keep, will keep adding on too, right? Is that the idea? Uh -huh. Yeah. So the design is, so you see like the two, the set structure, it's sliding. So that for the future, this like the, the void space, uh, they, they can add more the space uh, if they need uh, uh -huh. as a bedroom or... Yeah, that's what he was talking about, you yes. know, just make it into a room or something oh, yeah, like yes. that. Yeah, yes. so he's going to try and put up the foundation first, you yes. know. So basic idea for the sweat equity is we run together with the, uh, with the students um, and we build together uh, and the students also they don't have, some students they have but some students they don't have the skill to build. So uh -huh. we run all together uh, as a non-professional but uh, after the students leave they have the knowledge about how they build and also mm -hmm. how they expand. They call this Lone Tree's house. You know the story about this house. 
it's all, yeah, it's all in here, you know, the story, so, the foundation, and so everything, you know, are. how they're going to build and you know. So this is like a dark, uh, the brown, uh, the black, the wall, uh, we use uh, like a lime and some like a pigment, black pigment to put more the color. And also we use a finish, the technique, it's called a tadaract, it's a Moroccan technique to make it uh, more like a waterproof. And we like the scratch a lot to give them more of the waterproof, uh, the, uh, the texture on it. This texture has more the lime and this texture has more the sand. But these are the material we add more the lime so that we can make it more the smooth the finish uh, so that uh, we can give them uh, more the waterproof the texture on it. And we still see these guys' hands when they were doing this. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's uh, leaving us a souvenir. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. And you like that? <laughs> yep. It's all over the wall here. Yeah. What did you think of adobe when they mentioned it? Did you read And I go, oh no, it's going to be like Pablo or Zuni or Hopi House. <laughs> yeah. But what do you think now? Oh, I just love, I enjoy it so much. We still have people that comes around to this day and they say, well, what a look at your house, the inside. And then they come, God, it is so beautiful. Look at all these Indian artifacts that are in here, you know? Mm -hmm. And I say, yep. They even yes. built the shelf. They even built the shelf. That's all your art? Yep. So you sit here? What were you working on there? Uh, I was uh, doing a couch's pillow. Uh -huh. Like, see, I do with all kinds of design. Wow, you, wow that's beautiful. So. And will you sell that or do you keep it for yourself? Uh, I sell them. Do you really? <laughs> yeah. Nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah. I, I love it. I enjoy it so much because I always wanted a home. You didn't feel like your other place was a home? No. No. Nope. Why not? What makes a home for you? That old house over there, to me, you know, I wasn't too comfortable in there, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I wasn't comfortable. To me, it was like, not a home, you know. Kids, they never come home over there in Dahoka. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, and now we have this house built, you know, now they come and they stay for a week or on their vacation, you know. Right. And our grandkids, they come and they stay with us, you know. We just love them, you know, staying with us. It's so enjoyable, you know, because I always wanted this happening, you know. So now it's finally happening, you yeah. know. So you planted some aspens here? Uh, th those are going to be nice because the, the, the shade of aspens are also very, they are refreshing. When, when did you put the aspen over there? Yeah, when you were building the house, I stuck oh, it in mm, the trees. Oh. This, oh. So it won't be a lone tree. Oh, yeah, yeah, they got four, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah multiple <laughs> trees. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. That's great, yes. Yeah, you have more tree. That's great. So, okay, thank you very much. All right, yes. thank you. Okay. Thank you. Have a safe okay. trip back. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much.